What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. Welcome to my data science statistics tutorial series where I give you all the statistics knowledge that you need to conquer the data science world. I'm going to be talking about summary metrics of data here, specifically the measures of center, the mean, the median, and the mode. Make sure you watch this video all the way until the end because I'm going to go over how these things are calculated, how they can be used to mislead the non-statistically minded person, and also how they manifest in distributions of data. Naturally, before I get into these things, I ask that you guys smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and also hit the notification bell so you never miss an update from Richard on Data. Alright, so suppose I'm a really nosy person and I know the income of seven of my friends. Let's say those incomes are 48,000, 48,000, 53,000, 65,000, 90,000, 100,000, and 2 million. So if you look at the median of those numbers, it's 65,000. The mean of those numbers is $343,429. And the mode of those numbers is 48,000. So notice right off the bat that all three of those metrics tell a completely different story. So as far as the mode is concerned, that's super simple. 48,000 is our mode here because it's the only number in this tiny little data set which appears more than once. It appears twice, everything else appears once because it's the most frequently occurring number. That's the mode. Easy. That's all there is to it. The median, which is also known as the 50th percentile, is the number in the middle if you're listing your data values from smallest to largest. So you can think of it basically as the number in which approximately 50% of your data values are lower than, 50% of your values approximately are higher than. Now in this instance, we actually have an odd number of values, so it's literally just the middle number, super simple. If you did have an even number of data values, you'll take the middle two numbers, add them up, and just divide by two. Now the mean is what people are generally referring to when they talk about an average. Now the mean is pretty simply calculated as just the sum of all the data points divided by the total individual number of data points. It's also known as the expected value and it's commonly denoted either by the Greek letter mu or by the symbol E of X, which basically means the expected value of some random variable X. Just as a disclaimer, please keep in mind that I'm only using seven numbers here in a pretty silly example about my friend's income because it's easy to do the math in your head and visualize these things as well as to quickly see the massive discrepancies between the mean, the median, and the mode in this particular case. Now if I were taking a sample because I wanted to make some inference about a population, maybe in this case I'm super nosy and I want to understand what the average income of the population of all of my friends is, I would actually need two things. Number one, I would need a random sample that's representative of my entire population, and I would also need a larger sample size than seven, but that's a whole separate topic for a separate video. So notice in our example here, the mean is substantially higher than the median is, and that's just an artifact of the way a mean is calculated. So the mean is gonna end up being highly susceptible to outliers, and it gets pulled in one direction or another as a result of that. So really pay attention if you're analyzing your data and you see a large discrepancy between your mean and your median, that's going to mean that you have outliers, and outliers generally are going to inspire some questions. You might have outliers in your data which aren't even accurate, or you figure out from those outliers there's actually something else going on, and you may not even have data which accurately reflects what you think it does. So these are just questions that you have to think about and really talk to yourself and to your stakeholders about. You'll often want to give some serious thought to what's causing these outliers just based on your own understanding of the data and the domain knowledge associated with it. So just be really nuanced when you're talking with stakeholders about averages because these seem simple at first, 
but you can unveil some things you didn't even know when you start really digging into them. And if a stakeholder only asks you for one average, just give some really serious thought about which number, your mean or your median, really accurately reflects the nature of your data a little better. There's no exact science behind this. It's something that you'll have to figure out in every individual case. All right, lastly, let's look at how these things actually manifest in distributions of data. First of all, the easiest way to visualize the shape of a distribution is by making a histogram. In these cases here, you can see histograms which are smoothed out a little bit more, so they kind of start to take on more of a Pac-Man ghosty shape. The normal distribution has a lot of really nice properties to it. One of them is the fact that the mean is going to be equal to the median, is going to be equal to the mode. It gets a little bit more complicated though when we start talking about data that's skewed to the left or data that's skewed to the right. So take left skew data for instance. Now this can be a little tricky at first, but in a left skewed data set, you're going to have a lot of outliers which are on the left side compared to most of your data points being on the right side. So it's a little counterintuitive at first, but you end up with a shape like this. What ends up happening in these situations most of the time is that the outliers on the left side are going to pull the mean in that direction. The mode is where the most data points end up showing up and the median is going to be somewhere in the middle. So the mean is less than the median is less than the mode. Right skewed data is very similar to left skewed data and it's actually probably significantly more common. Distributions which are used to model a lot of real life phenomena called the exponential and the gamma distributions will generally take on a right skewed form. This is where a lot of your data is on the left side, but you have outliers on the right side pulling the distribution in that direction. So in this instance, your mode is on the left where most of your data is, slightly greater than that is your median, and then the outliers on the right side are going to pull the mean in that direction. So you have the opposite situation as the left skewed case. You have the mode less than the median, less than the mean most of the time. That covers it for mean, median, and mode. Now you know how these things are calculated, the stipulations around them, and how they can be used to deceive people, and then also how they manifest in distributions of data like these. So thanks for watching this video. Until next time, Richard, on data.